Vasily Arkhipov was second in command aboard the B-59, one of four nuclear submarines sent by the Soviet Union to Cuba during the Cuban Missile Crisis. The Americans were dropping bombs underwater in an attempt to force the submarines to surface, so the submarines had to dive deep. So deep that they could no longer maintain contact with Moscow, or anyone in the outside world for that matter. The men aboard the submarines were growing anxious. Some believed that while they were underwater, war may have broken out above. They had a choice to make. If three officers, including Arkhipov, all agreed, they could fire a nuclear torpedo at the Americans. Arkhipov refused. Because of his actions that day, Arkhipov single-handedly prevented World War III. What he did not know at the time was that he was trying to solve one of the most fundamental problems of distributed systems, the two generals problem. In reality, the two generals problem is about two computers trying to reach a common decision. But we're going to make it more fun by using this high tension scenario with real consequences. We'll have one general be Arkhipov, deep underwater off the coast of Cuba, and the other be Nikita Khrushchev, the head of the Soviet Union in Moscow. These two generals, Arkhipov and Khrushchev, need to reach a common decision to either attack America together or do nothing. Let's first make a few assumptions so that this problem isn't trivial. We'll assume that neither Arkhipov nor Khrushchev had enough firepower in order to completely destroy America. So if only one of them attacked, then America would counterattack and they would lose the war. But if both of them attacked together, then they would win before America even had a chance to respond. Given this scenario, it's very important that if they attack, they attack together. We'll also assume that there was no external factor influencing their decisions, such as the knowledge that America had already declared war. This means that the only way in which they could reach a decision is by communicating with each other. The problem is, because Arkhipov is deep underwater, communication is unreliable, so messages between them might be lost. And finally, we'll rule out any trivial protocol where both generals always decide to do nothing. If both generals want to attack, and no messages are lost, then both generals should decide to attack. Okay, with these assumptions, let's see if we can solve the two generals problem. Let's try to come up with a protocol that both Arkhipov and Khrushchev can follow, such that no matter what, they will always reach the same decision. Here's how we'll go about doing this. We'll start by going through each general's options. Attack, decide to do nothing, or send a message. These options will narrow down through time, and at some point in the protocol, the generals must decide to either attack or commit to doing nothing. All we have to do is guarantee that at this point, both generals agree. Let's start with Arkhipov. Let's say he wants to attack. He can either launch the nukes, decide to do nothing, or send a message. Now he can't actually attack yet because he doesn't know what Khrushchev wants to do, so all he can do is send a message. Let's say he sends a message saying, I would like to attack, and then waits for a response from Khrushchev. If he doesn't get this response, then Arkhipov would have to assume the worst, that Khrushchev never got the message and won't decide to attack. Therefore, Arkhipov can't attack either. In other words, if Arkhipov hears nothing, then he does nothing. Keep that in mind, because it's going to come up again. Now let's switch over to Khrushchev's point of view, and consider both the case where he never got Arkhipov's message, and the case where the message eventually arrives. In the first case, if Khrushchev never hears anything from Arkhipov, then he has no idea what Arkhipov is about to do, so the safest decision is to do nothing. In other words, if Khrushchev hears nothing, then he does nothing. Now this aligns with what Arkhipov assumed earlier, so we're still good. In the second case, if Khrushchev got the message, then he still has his three choices, to attack, do nothing, or reply to Arkhipov. Now it doesn't make sense for Khrushchev to do nothing, because clearly Arkhipov wants to attack, and we don't want a protocol where Khrushchev always decides to do nothing. So we should rule that option out, and have Khrushchev either attack or reply to Arkhipov. But Khrushchev actually can't attack either, because he knows that Arkhipov is waiting for his response, and will do nothing until he gets the response. 
So Khrushchev has to send a response saying something like, hey, I got your message. Can Khrushchev attack now? Well, no. If this message got lost, then Arkhipov would hear nothing and do nothing. So Khrushchev needs to know whether Arkhipov got this message or not. And the only way he would know this is if Arkhipov sent yet another message back. What's more, if Khrushchev doesn't get this message back from Arkhipov, then he would have to assume the worst, that Arkhipov heard nothing and did nothing. So Khrushchev would also have to do nothing. So yet again, if Khrushchev hears nothing, he does nothing. We're back where we started and no closer to reaching a common decision. In fact, you can extend this line of reasoning inductively and arrive at the conclusion that no matter how many messages each general sends to each other, they can never decide to attack. And that's because the two generals problem is unsolvable. There is no non-trivial solution that will guarantee that the two generals will always reach the same decision. Arkhipov got lucky. Now wait a minute, that's ridiculous. Sure, maybe they need to send a couple of messages back and forth just to be sure. But are we seriously saying that after a hundred of them, they still wouldn't know if they should attack? It is kind of ridiculous if you think about it in terms of the number of messages that they have to send back and forth. But the key is the wording. You just came up with one specific example where the two generals are likely to agree. But we need a protocol where the two generals will always agree. And that protocol does not exist. Either both generals will always decide to do nothing, or there will always be some chance that they disagree. But let's try to reframe the problem in terms of how many messages each general has to wait for before deciding. So we can see if our conclusion still holds up. And let's try two. So each general has to wait for two messages before deciding. The number doesn't actually matter. You can feel free to substitute it with your favorite positive integer. Imagine if Arkhipov sent Khrushchev a message and Khrushchev sent a reply. Arkhipov sent a reply to that. And now Khrushchev has the two messages he needs. So he can launch the nuke. And imagine that after this, Khrushchev's radio breaks, so Arkhipov never gets the last message that he needs, and decides to do nothing. Clearly, this doesn't work. Well, Arkhipov sent the message in the first place, so he doesn't need to wait for two messages. He just needs to wait for the first reply. Okay, let's try that. We actually still get the same problem, except this time Arkhipov sends the nukes. Again, the number of messages doesn't matter. Consensus is never guaranteed. And I claim that there are two key underlying reasons to this. The imbalance of information and the binary non-probabilistic decisions that the two generals have to make. Message passing, or more broadly, information transfer, is a one-way street. When one general sends a message to the other, the other general either receives this message or doesn't. The receiver knows which one it is, but the sender doesn't. Because the receiver knows more than the sender, fundamentally they will never be on the same page. So it makes sense that we can never guarantee that they will make the same decision. In the two generals problem, both generals have to commit to either attacking or doing nothing. There is no room for in-betweens. And that's not how things work in real life. Let's say you want to hang out with a friend at the park at 12, but both of you have pretty bad reception at home. You send meet up at 12, and they respond, sure. If at this point, the message thread stops because somebody lost reception, then you might not actually be sure if the hangout is happening. And this is what the two generals experience as well. But this is where the scenario and the two generals problem diverge. If this conversation continues and you keep sending messages back and forth, then each message that you send increases the probability that you will both show up. And at some point, this probability is close enough to 100% that you will just both decide to go to the park. For the two generals who aren't dealing with probabilities, these additional messages don't help. Even if the two generals were 99% likely to agree with each other, the off chance that one general decides not to attack is enough to make the problem unsolvable. The two generals problem is a big deal in computer science. Just like the two generals, computers communicate by sending messages, which might get lost. So given that the two generals problem has no solution, how do computers solve it in real life? There are many solutions, 
But one way that we can get away with this in computer science is by electing a single leader computer. If all decisions have to go through a single leader, then we don't really have to worry about this agreement problem anymore. The leader makes a decision whenever it wants to, and everyone just waits for the leader, potentially waiting forever. This approach, of course, has its own problems. For example, how do we determine who the leader is? And what do we do once this leader goes silent? That is a complex topic that merits its own video, so stay tuned.